السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ اللہ اکبر اللہ اکبر اللہ اکبر اللہ اکبر اشہد اللہ الہ الا اللہ اشہد اللہ الہ الا اللہ اشہد ان محمد رسول اللہ اشہد ان محمد رسول اللہ حیاء حیا السلا حیا الفلا حیا الفلا اللہ اکبر اللہ اکبر لا الہ الا اللہ ان الحمد للہ نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا محمدا صلى الله عليه وسلم عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وجاهد في سبيل الله حق جهاده حتى أتاه اليقين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وصحابته الصالحين الغر الميامين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا ثم اما بعد يا brothers and sisters in the last week the Muslim Ummah has been struck with a number of devastating calamities. Just a few days ago, we heard about the massive earthquake, 6.8 magnitude, that shook the area of Morocco. Almost 3,000 people have died and double or more the number 
have been displaced from their homes. And then we are also now hearing about the devastate the devastation in Libya where because of the floods in eastern Libya more than 11,000 people have died and another 10,000 plus are missing dear brothers and sisters in today's khutbah I want to address two main points one why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow these kinds of things to happen this is a question that comes to the minds of a number of people why does God Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create suffering and pain and natural disasters that is the first topic that I would like to address and the second topic that I would like to address is what are we supposed to do what are we here in Plano, Texas expected to do in times like these why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create evil what we perceive to be evil dear brothers and sisters even though a true believer does not ask this question because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran لا يسأل عما يفعل وهم يسألون he is not questioned about what he does they will be questioned we don't question Allah Azza wa Jal we will be questioned by Allah we don't ask him why do you do this it is not our place it is not proper adab to ask Allah this question so even though a true believer does not ask this question most Muslims experience moments of doubt and because of that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have given us a number of wisdoms why he subhanahu wa ta'ala does what he does so that it brings yaqeen and certainty to the heart of the believer and our ulama have pointed out a series of wisdoms we will limit ourselves to a few of them in this khutbah insha'Allah ta'ala in trying to answer this question why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create suffering the first piece of wisdom dear brothers and sisters is that we all must realize and never forget that this life on this earth this life is a test this life is a test and even though the test may seem to be very difficult the reward is well worth the difficulty because the reward is paradise Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said and the hadith is in Sahih Muslim that the most devastated person in this world from the people of paradise will be brought forward on the day of resurrection and that person will be dipped just for a moment in paradise and then he will be removed from paradise and it will be asked O oh son of Adam have you seen any hardship did you experience any distress on earth and the person will say no by Allah my Lord I did not experience any distress I did not see a single hardship so this is so that we get a proper perspective of things while going through the daily routine of our lives and the daily news that we receive in our 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years on this earth it may seem to be a lot but when we put it in this proper perspective on that day when we are just dipped in paradise just for a moment 
then we forget all of this. All of this will seem insignificant. So this life is a test. And the test is not just for the poor and the sick and those that are devastated. It is also a test for those who are enjoying ease and prosperity because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَبَلَوْنَاهُمْ بِالْحَسَنَاتِ وَالسَّيِّئَاتِ That we have tested them with ease and with hardship, with prosperity as well as with adversity. So those who are facing adversity, it is a test of their patience. And those of us who are facing ease and prosperity, it is a test of our gratitude. And I will talk more about that in the second khutbah, insha'Allah ta'ala. The second wisdom, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates suffering, is because there is always a greater good that comes out of it. Evil oftentimes leads to good. In Surah Al-Kahf, we see an example of that. The story of Musa and Khidr. When Musa is traveling with Khidr and Khidr does a number of things and Musa does not understand why this is happening. But then at the end when Khidr explains, then he realizes that because he put a hole in the boat of the fishermen, because he damaged their boat, which seems to be such a terrible thing to do, it actually helped them save their boats from the king. And because he killed that young man, which seems to be such a terrible thing to do, because of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved the parents of that child from the sadness and disappointment that this child would bring to them and replace this child with a righteous one. So oftentimes evil leads to good. There is no such thing as absolute evil in this earth. Allah does not create something that is absolutely evil. Anything that He creates, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that may seem to be evil to us, actually leads to something that is good. It's kind of like a a flu shot at a worldly level. We go and we get a flu shot, or we go and we get our children immunized, immunized. Seems like such a terrible thing to do for you to hand over your newborn baby so that the doctor can poke holes in the body of that baby. Seems like such an evil thing to do. But we do that because we know the greater good that will come out of that. The child doesn't realize it, but we as adults realize it. And if we have the proper perspective then inshallah we realize it at this level as well. That whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends down an affliction, there is always a greater good that comes out of that. The third wisdom, dear brothers and sisters, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates suffering, is to give us a reality check that the one who is in control is God. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. That we, despite our advancements and talents, don't have control over anything. He, subhanahu wa ta'ala, is in control. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, and we will surely let them taste the nearer punishment, short of the greater punishment, that perhaps they will return. The idea is for us to return back to him subhanahu wa ta'ala and realize that he is in control and he deserves our worship. You know Muhammad Ali, the boxer, rahimahullah ta'ala, he developed Parkinson's disease later in his life. But early on when he had first developed Parkinson's before it became extremely severe, in the early stages he used to say, God gave me Parkinson's syndrome to show me that I am not the greatest. He is. Subhanallah. This is the realization that we need to have. 
when we are faced with these kinds of calamities, that it is a reminder from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He is Al Qahar, the, the dominator, that He is Al Muhaymin, the one who has full power over us, that He is Al Razaq. That he is the provider and without him we cannot even put food on the table. And that is why whenever we are faced with a calamity we are to say Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un Indeed we belong to Allah. He owns us. And indeed to him meaning to his plan and to his rule and to his decree is our return. There is no escape from it. It is to help us realize this reality. That is the third wisdom. The fourth wisdom behind Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creating suffering is to cleanse us and to reward us and to elevate us. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a sound hadith related by Tirmidhi that trials and tribulations will continue to befall the believing man and believing woman with regard to themselves and their children and their wealth until they meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with no sin on them. He also said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam no fatigue or disease or anxiety or sadness or pain or distress befalls a Muslim even if it were the prick he receives from a thorn but that Allah expiates some of his or her sins because of that. The hadith is related by Imam Bukhari in his Sahih. And the Prophet ﷺ also said إن هذه الأمة أمة مرحومة that this nation of mine is a nation that enjoys distinct rahma of Allah Azza wa Jal. It has no torment in the hereafter, but rather its torment is only in this world in the form of tribulations and earthquakes and killings and afflictions. The hadith is related by Abu Dawood in his Sunan. So that is the fourth wisdom to cleanse us and to elevate us. The fifth wisdom, dear brothers and sisters, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates suffering is so that we can appreciate good times. The reason why He creates evil is so that we can appreciate and enjoy good. We recognize generosity when there is poverty. We recognize and appreciate Sympathy when there is someone who's sad. We recognize kindness when somebody's in need. We recognize joy when somebody is in misery. And we recognize victory after we have experienced the pain of defeat. So, in order to appreciate and enjoy good, we must experience its opposite as well. Number six, the sixth wisdom why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates suffering and evil is to bring out our best potential. It's to bring out our best potential. Because virtues such as patience or courage or mercy or compassion or generosity and so on, you can claim to have these virtues. But when do you really get to prove that you have these virtues except in a time of calamity? It is in a time of hardship that my patience will shine. It's in a time of fear that my courage will show. It's in a time when somebody is hurt that I'll be able to show mercy and compassion. It's in a and it's in a time when somebody is poor and destitute that I will be able to show my generosity. So to bring out the best potential of human beings, there has to be an occasion, an opportunity for that. And that is the sixth wisdom behind creating suffering. The seventh wisdom, dear brothers and sisters, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates suffering is to detach us from this world. To make us realize that this world that we love so much, that we become so attached to, that we begin to live for, that this world is full of pain and full of misery and is not worth 
us to attach our hearts to. It is not. This is Darul Bala. This is not Darul Salam. Darul Salam awaits us in the hereafter. This world, this life is full of Bala. It's full of misery and tribulations. To make us realize that, to help us remember that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us from time to time the nature of this world in the form of suffering and trials and tribulations. And the eighth and last wisdom that we will cover today in this khutbah, inshaAllah ta'ala, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates suffering, is to motivate us to avoid eternal suffering. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives a taste of what it feels like to suffer. So that we avoid eternal suffering of the hereafter. So that we ask this question, do we really want to feel this miserable all of eternity? If not, then we must do something about it. So that we are prevented from the eternal miserable abode of hellfire. And make sure that our final abode is Jannah, is paradise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us understand and internalize these divine wisdoms behind what he does subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us internalize these truths. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fa astaghfiruh fa ya thawz al mustaghfirin. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa afdalu salati wa atammu taslimi ala Sayyidina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqu allaha wa kulu qawlan sadida Yuslih lakum a'malakum Wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum Wa man yuti illaha wa rasoolahu Faqad faza fawzan azima Thumma amma ba'd Dear brothers and sisters We were talking about why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates the type of suffering that we have seen in the past few days in the devastation that has occurred in Morocco and then in Libya. But in addition to what I said in the first khutbah, and perhaps more important than all of that, what we must realize is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us again and again in the Quran, that this suffering these calamities, these natural disasters, quote-unquote, they are actually a result of our own actions. Our own actions. So instead of blaming Allah for them, we need to blame ourselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ظَهَرَ الْفَسَادُ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ بِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِي النَّاسِ لِيُذِيقَهُمْ بَعْضَ الَّذِي عَمِلُوا لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجِعُونَ in Surah Al-Rum, Allah says, Fasad. Fasad is all kinds of evil. Evil has appeared on land and sea due to what the hands of human beings have earned so that He, Allah, makes them, the human beings, taste some of what they have committed of wrong deeds. Perhaps they may return back to Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in Surah Al-Shura, وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ وَيَعْفُ عَنْ كَثِيرٍ He says, and whatever affliction or disaster befalls you, it is on account of what your own hands have earned. And he overlooks a lot of things. وَيَعْفُ عَنْ كَثِيرٍ He doesn't punish us for every single thing. He overlooks a lot. But then there comes a time when he gives us a taste and even that is for our own benefit. لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجِعُونَ So that they turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And yes, yes dear brothers and sisters, when we disobey Allah azza wa jal, when we rebel against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we reject Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we ignore him, when we belittle his commandments and prohibitions, when we do these things, the sin of that doesn't just affect me. It doesn't just affect the sinner, it affects everyone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاتَّقُوا فِتْنَةً لَا تُصِيبَنَّ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا مِنْكُمْ خَاصَّةً 
And beware of an affliction that will not smite exclusively those among you who have done wrong. Know that Allah is severe in exacting retribution. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrated that he came to Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha with another man who said to her, O oh mother of the believers, tell us about earthquakes. So she said, when fornication is deemed permissible, and when intoxicants are consumed, and when musical instruments are played, Allah becomes angry in the heavens, and He says to the earth, shake beneath them. Then, if people do not repent and desist, He brings down their buildings on top of them. So the man said, O oh mother of the believers, is this a punishment for the people? She replied and said, For those who believe, it is a warning and a mercy. But for those who disbelieve, it is an admonition, a torment and punishment. And so we learn from this that everybody is affected as a result of sin when Allah brings down his punishment. But those who are innocent who suffer in this world will be rewarded in the next world. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhumah said that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that when Allah intends to punish a people, the punishment afflicts everyone amongst them, then they are resurrected on the day of judgment according to their deeds. The last thing that I would like to talk about in the khutbah before we conclude is what should be our response to these kinds of calamities. As I said at the beginning of the khutbah, 3,000 people have died in Morocco due to the earthquakes. Many more have been displaced. 11,000 people have been killed, more than that, in Libya because of the floods. And almost the same number are reported missing. What are we here in Plano, Texas supposed to do when we see a part of our ummah suffering? Five things. Number one, remember the ultimate earthquake and prepare for it. إِذَا زُلْزِلَتِ الْأَرْضُ زِلْزَالَهَا وَأَخْرَجَتِ الْأَرْضُ أَثْقَالَهَا وَقَالَ الْإِنسَانُ مَا لَهَا يَوْمَئِذٍ تُحَدِّثُ أَخْبَارَهَا بِأَنَّ رَبَّكَ أَوْحَى لَهَا يَوْمَئِذٍ يَصْدُرُ النَّاسِ أَشْتَاتَ لِيُرَوْا أَعْمَالَهُمْ فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَى وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًّا يَرَى These earthquakes that we witness in our worldly life are supposed to remind us of the ultimate earthquake that will happen towards the end of times so that we can prepare for that day. That is the first thing that we must do. Number two, turn to Allah Azza wa Jal in dua. Make dua for those who have suffered, <coughs> who are suffering. Make dua for the ummah. Make dua for yourselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا إِلَىٰ أُمَمٍ مِّن قَبْلِكَ فَأَخَذْنَاهُمْ بِالْبَأْسَاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَضَرَّعُونَ فَلَوْلَا إِذْ جَاءَهُمْ بَأْسُنَا تَضَرَّعُوا وَلَكِنْ قَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَزَيَّنَ لَهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that the reason why He sends down these afflictions is so that we can implore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with humility. So that is the second thing that we must do. Turn to Allah and implore Him in dua. Number three, Tawbah to Allah Azza wa Jal. Repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَنُذِيقَنَّهُمْ مِنَ الْعَذَابِ الْأَدْنَى دُونَ الْعَذَابِ الْأَكْبَرِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجِعُونَ And we will surely let them taste the nearer punishment short of the greater punishment so that perhaps they will return. A number of Sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and early scholars have said that al-adab al-adna, the nearer punishment in this ayah, refers to difficulties, 
sicknesses and general tribulations of this life that Allah Azza wa Jal subjects His servants to with the purpose of encouraging them to repent and turn back to Him. So Tawbah is the third response that is needed. The fourth response, dear brothers and sisters, that we need to do is we must heed the warning from Allah and realize that this today happened in Morocco and Libya, tomorrow it can happen to us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, أَأَمِنْتُمْ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاءِ أَنْ يَخْسِفَ بِكُمُ الْأَرْضَ فَإِذَا هِيَ تَمُورُ Do you feel secure that the one who is in heaven will not cause the earth to swallow you up as it quakes violently? So we must take a warning from this dear brothers and sisters. And the fifth and final thing that we must do in this time is give sadaqah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna sadaqata la tutufi'u ghadab al-rabb wa tadfa'u mita tasu' That indeed charity extinguishes the anger of Allah and averts an evil ending. During the khilafah of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, there was an earthquake that shook some of the Muslim provinces. So he wrote a letter to the people of those provinces in which he said, Indeed, this earthquake is something with which Allah is reprimanding His servants. I am writing to all the provinces, all the provinces, to go out on such and such day to such and such town, and anyone who possesses something, let him donate some of it as a means of purification. Dear brothers and sisters, as I mentioned at the beginning of the khutbah, Allah doesn't just test us with adversity. He also tests us with prosperity. And whereas the test of our brothers and sisters in Libya and Morocco may be adversity, our test is the prosperity and easy times that we are in. This is a test for us to see what we will do with our wealth. In times like this when our brothers and sisters are in dire need of it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears in the Quran and says, ثُمَّ لَتُسْأَلُنَّ يَوْمَئِذٍ عَنِ النَّعِيمِ By Allah, you will be questioned about the blessings that you have enjoyed in this world. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ وَلَإِن كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِي لَشَدِيدٍ That remember when Allah made the announcement, your Lord, that if you are thankful for the blessings that Allah has given you, then I will give you more. But if you are ungrateful, then my punishment indeed is severe. Dear brothers and sisters, I remind myself and you at a time like this that we must do whatever we can to provide the financial assistance that our brothers and sisters need in those lands. Insha'Allah, as you leave, you will find an opportunity in the lobby to donate towards this cause. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us pass our test and help our brothers and sisters pass their tests as well. Ameen. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad kama sallayta ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ali Sayyidina Ibrahim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad kama barakta ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ali Sayyidina Ibrahim fil alameen. Innaka hamidun majid. Allahumma gfil lil mu'minina wal mu'minat wal muslimina wal muslimat al ahya'i minhum wal amwat إنك يا مولانا سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات اللهم اشف مرضانا واشف مرضى المسلمين وارحم موتانا وارحم موت المسلمين وفرج عن عبادك المستضعفين المظلومين في مشارق الأرض ومغاربها عاجلا غير آجل يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم الطف بالبلاد والعباد يا لطيف يا أرحم الراحمين آمين 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 والحمد لله رب العالمين Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. Hayya 'ala as-salah. Hayya 'ala as-salah. Hayya 'ala al-falah. Hayya 'ala al-falah. Qad qamad as-salah, qad qamad as-salah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah. Allahu Akbar.
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذا زلزلت الأرض زلزالها وأخرجت الأرض أثقالها وقال الإنسان ما لها يومئذ تحدث أخبارها بأن ربك أوحى لها يومئذ يصدر الناس أشتاتا ليروا أعمالهم فمن يعمل مثقال ذرة خيرا يره ومن يعمل مثقال ذرة شرا يره الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أرأيت الذي يكذب بالدين فذلك الذي يدع اليتيم ولا يحض على طعام المسكين فويل للمصلين الذين هم عن صلاتهم ساهون الذين هم يراءون ويمنعون الماعون الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله 
استغفر الله الله السلام السلام تبارك Inshallah, dear brothers and sisters, once again, as I mentioned in the khutbah, as you walk out, you will see an opportunity in the lobby to donate towards the victims in uh, Morocco as well as Libya. Uh, they are brothers with uh, some, uh, some devices that can help you make your payment. Uh, you can also use the, the Mohid uh, kiosks. There's a bucket for this purpose.